use that to drive our monthly meetings as a faculty. Obviously, we want to do our best to adhere to the governing laws of the state, um, state and federal governments, and also the provisions of the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, which is our accrediting agency. I think it's fair to say that I think you know, not only as a school but as a district, we feel very strongly about the well-roundedness of our students and, and what role uh, co-curricular activities play in contributing to that well-roundedness. I wrote an article not, recent, uh, not long ago for um, the transcript in the superintendents around the schoolyard column about the value of co-curricular activities, and I am very proud of the fact that we have increased our um, extracurricular activity offerings to uh, 31 and I expect uh, 31 different offerings to students, and I expect a couple of more in the fall to be presenting uh, to the superintendent and to you for uh, possible adoption. Um, goal number, f and that goes for our athletic program as well, which you know, I think given tonight's presentation speaks well of, you know, we had a very good spring with our lacrosse, all of our sports, and we have a high level of participation among the student body in our sports programs, which is, which is uh, again, I think speaks a lot about our students and their, their investment in their school. Um, goal number five, you know, we're always looking to make sure that we can maintain uh, levels of student-teacher um, ratios that are, um, that allow for personalization of, of, of instruction um, and thus maximize student learning. And we've been fortunate, I think, in, in recent years to um, enjoy the support of the community that allows us to have the staff that we need to do a good job. Uh, goal number six, this is kind of interesting, it's, it happens to be the focus of the superintendent's <coughs> administrator's retreat that we were on today and are on tomorrow about um, the, the new teacher evaluation model and, you know, the idea of, of classroom walkthroughs, um, teachers and administrators, you know, kind of getting into classrooms on a more regular basis and observing what's going on and providing the kind of constructive feedback that is aimed solely at and enhancing um, student learning um, is something that we had piloted last year and we're looking, looking to do more of in 2012-13. Um, I think the accreditation site visit speaks for itself. I was before you all not too long ago to speak about that and um, you know there's a, a great deal of work that needs to go into that. That certainly is a, is a goal for us for uh, the coming two school years but definitely 12-13. <coughs> As Mrs. O'Connell said, the, the, the building project is, um, is substantial um, in a word and um, you know, we're certainly focused on, on what needs to be done to make sure that that project goes um, as smoothly as it possibly can. Um, the Common Core Standards for English Language Arts and Mathematics, uh, you know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Patrick Daly's work in leading our um, curriculum leaders uh, at the high school in um, ensuring that the provisions of that document are implemented in those two major departments, English Language Arts and language arts, excuse me, and math. Um, you know, preparing our students for college and career success is, is you know, certainly one of our chief objectives. And the, the proper implementation and the value of the Common Core is going to be, become even increasingly important in 2012-13. And as I said just a moment ago, tied into goal number six, um, the teacher evaluation, the educator evaluation model. There's a lot of work to be done. We've started some good work with that. There's more to come in 2012-13. So with that, um, just if I could highlight for you briefly some, some kind of front burner issues for us in the coming year, um, not to be redundant, but the accreditation, um, the secondary school building project, the faculty book discussion groups, I spoke of those a moment ago. I, you know, I, I think those contribute an awful lot to a healthy dynamic in the school among the faculty by bringing people together now this year. Believe it or not, people opted for a morning group, so we're going to be meeting at 6.30 in the morning um, to, to discuss the book that we've chosen on Common Ground. Just kind of fits people's schedules better. But I think, I think that kind of level of interest speaks well of, of people's uh, desire to, to do the right thing, so to speak, and to come together about something that's of interest and is helpful to students. We're always looking to um, upgrade technology. Um, you know, the school improvement plan is a pretty pretty healthy document I think you'll agree it's it's I don't know about 17 or 18 pages we put a lot of time into that document it's not just a check off for us we we'd like to think as a, as a school that we live by the kinds of things that we say we hope to do as a school and and we will use that and work to achieve the goals that are stated uh, in the plan um, the continued expansion of course offerings I it's my hope to come to um, to meet with the superintendent and then come to the school committee in the in the winter um, and 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 present to you uh, our desire as a high school to continue to expand our course offerings. I, I already know that um, of a couple that we're, we're very excited about um, implementing in 2013-14, so um, I will be making a presentation <coughs> to you in a few months on that. 
And as I said a moment ago, um, an offshoot of the climate study team is the My Voice survey that we administered in, uh, in uh, April of 2012. And um, some work has already gone into preparing the, the kind of the analyzing that data and putting it into a form that we can present to our students, parents, the community, um, all of you, um, in an effort to you know, continually enhance our, our culture and climate at the high school. So that's kind of my overview of the uh, school improvement plan. Questions or comments for John? I actually have a, a couple of quick questions. Um, I actually had mentioned this to Superintendent Willis uh, recently in terms of the new schools. I, I noticed a lot of requests for smart boards, et cetera, and you know, there's likely not going to be a lot of money for those. And, but I also saw some requests for whiteboards, plain old whiteboards. And there's a, there's a new technology out there. It's called Idea Paint, uh, one word. And it's a company, and it's paint mm -hmm. that you paint on a regular wall, and it turns the wall into a whiteboard. <coughs> and I, I think we really ought to look into that for the new school, because you can turn an entire classroom into a whiteboard that is wipeable just like any other kind of whiteboard. You know, the company uh, you own 50 percent no, of? No, I don't own anything. Right. They also have the rolls of whiteboard. Right, they also have the rolls of, the, you, they have rolls of whiteboard yeah, that you can. That's pretty inexpensive. That's right. the way to really go, but we could talk about that later. But I think it's something you might want to look into, you know, as part of your, your ever-growing school budget. I know you get a large yeah. uh, increase every year, <laughs> but it's something that I've talked to the superintendent about for the new schools that we should look into, and something that, because uh, I sure. did see a couple mentions of whiteboards. The other thing I want to mention is, I think a, a large percentage of the requests, um, aside from personnel um, and technology, a lot of the requests are going to be met by the new school. Um, that's true. More space, more science labs, better equipment, um, you know, better space for theater, for art, for music. I think most of those will be met by the new school. We're going to have to wait a couple years. And I, I also think you note, <coughs> smartly note, several issues that we have to keep an eye on over the next two years while we're building the new school. Um, everything from the septic system, which I know Carl and Wayne and his crew have a, a pretty good handle on, to other issues, air quality, et cetera, that I know we're monitoring on a regular basis that we have to, we have to keep on top of while we're, while we're building the new school. Yeah, I think if I could, Mr. Webster, I think probably you're talking about the section that that Wayne came in when we yeah. presented to the committee. Yeah, you know, the truth of the matter is the high school as a facility is going to be standing for three more years, you know, two years right. produced by the high school and one by the middle school. So there are some, I think, you know, Wayne is, and I think his, his work history has shown that he's very proactive about keeping the buildings in tip-top shape. And knowing that, you know, three years is a long time still, and for those, for that building to function well. And I think he made the point, ably in, that, in his presentation to us that these were things that still needed consideration. Right. But the, the, you're absolutely right that the new building is going to resolve a significant number of the, the things that we have in that plan as far as you know, structural issues go. Right. One other thing I wanted to, I mean, there's a lot of great stuff in here, but um, the one other thing I wanted to mention was the, um, and I know we've talked about it briefly before, was the new transition academy that yep. um, Mrs. Bullock working with um, you and, and other, st other staff have put into place um, for um, you know, service educational social needs of students who will graduate high school but still require, mm -hmm. you know, additional help. And I think that's a, a great thing that we've done in this district. And then the other thing um, which I've been pushing on, and I know you've been pushing on the same thing, and we've been kind of co-Sisyphans here, pushing the rock up the hill and never getting it there, but is increasing the staffing in the guidance um, department. I feel that that's a critical need. Um, I don't know how we're going to do it, but... Um, the number of students is only growing at the high school, and I think with the new facility, we're going to lose fewer students, is my guess, and that'll just be more of a burden on the th three counselors we have now. And I think we really need, it's a critical time for these kids, and we really need, a, I think we really need an additional guidance counselor. So I, I support agree. you in that area. I would agree. Thank you. Any other questions? I had a um, question pertaining yeah. to uh, technology. Have you thought about a BYOD, bring your own device policy. We have, yeah. We have had uh, a number of discussions around that administrative council. Yes, we have. I think uh, I think we're at a point, I, I be, you know what, it's kind of interesting because I, I, I wonder how much technology is going to change by the time that new school opens. I mean, we're talk, we're, we're prob we probably can't even envision some things right. that we're going to have available yeah. to us in two years. Right. So it's kind of, it's difficult, it's challenging yeah. because you're talking about things you know now, but is the iPad going to be 
you know, I don't know if obsolete's too strong of a word, but I think there's going to be something replacing it. Yeah. But the, the bring your own device is definitely something we've talked about, and I don't think we're far off from students. Uh, you know, we had a workshop today, and we used our cell phones to text a response to a question that the facilitator posed to us. I don't think we're that far off from, I think from in students any age doing group, that. You can actually fill that gap in. I, and maybe I, what we need is a parent survey. Of yeah, I think that's a that's a great point. I think point. We're, we're, we're getting close to that. I really think so. I yeah. think that's a great I point do. because there are a number of um, – and the superintendent knows this, I basically read everything, and there are a number of um, policies being developed for BYOD and BYOT, Bring Your Own Technology, in schools, and how to, how to appropriately and safely do that. And I think that that's a great, because not all the kids, but I think a large number of students have devices now that can be used um, as, a, as a little computer. And then the school can make up the difference, right? You know, for those that don't, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't know what percentage, but I would cons I would bet it's very high. I'm glad it's. In I'm North glad. It's, I would yes, so. I'm glad it's being embraced. So mm -hmm. that's great. And this is in your the offsite that you. Um, Patrick Daly and and I have been reading a lot of the articles that you forward to us, and taking a look at our current acceptable use policy. And come and making recommendations to bring to the policy subcommittee because the policy subcommittee will need to spend some time taking a look at revising acceptable use because right now accept acceptable use policy prohibits right. the use of own devices. Right. So it's a a paradigm shift in thinking, but it's definitely the way to go. And we've been taking so. a look at some policies that mm -hmm. are out there as well as um, there are guidelines for the appropriate way to make the transition. So we're taking that into consideration <coughs> before we bring it forward to the subcommittee of the school committee. Do we know, of, have you heard of any other districts or in Massachusetts that have moved to that type of policy? Or I don't. No. I believe that Burlington. If I had to guess, it would be Burlington, Burlington would be the one I would guess, yeah. Moved, has moved into that realm of using your own device. Yeah. They're doing it anyway. Right. So now we're just legitimizing that by coming up with guidelines to assist that implementation. But Burlington, they bought iPads for all the schools. They have high a one-to-one, one, right. yeah. but that's only at the high school. Yeah. Only the high and school I, think Beverly was, I think Beverly was only the high school as well. Yes, Beverly yeah. is only the high school, and that's laptops. <laughs> Right. IPad. Jerry's a little confused. It's BYOD, as yeah. in dog, not B. Okay. He was a little confused. Uh, <laughs> I just want, I wanted to straighten him out on. I wanted to make sure he, he was confused. That's just a little. Yeah. Um, anything else for Mr. Bernard? I happen to be impressed with some of the schools some of the kids had applied to and were accepted to this mm. year. Yeah, yeah some really, really good list. It just shows the kind of staff and leadership we have at the high school at this point. Yep. Very good list. Very fortunate. We have very, very good students. They, they, I'm, I'm very pleased with their, they're, they're branching out too. I've noticed in the last few years, they're, they're applying to schools that I think in years past may have been schools that they would not have even considered. And I credit our guidance counselors with, with, um, you know, exposing students to those, to those schools that may be a little bit off the, the norm. You know, we, we've got, you know, students are applying to schools that I think are. Years ago would have been maybe considered a reach warden that they're now feeling much more comfortable, much more prepared to, to apply to and are getting accepted to. So thank you for recognizing that. I'll tell you, having the Naviant system and the oh, online fantastic. system gives the guidance counselors more time to focus where they need to be focused as opposed to stamping envelopes and, uh, and all that other stuff. You get rid of all of that, all of that um, you know, not dirty Not to work. take too much time, but it's very exciting when you go, back, go through the guidance uh, suite and you see a student in there, and the computer is in such a way that I can see what's going. And the counselor is there, and the students kind of hunkered over the computer, and that whole scattergram is up there, and they're plotting where their, what their, how their data uh, might help them to get into a school that they're interested in. Um, and it's it's a very, it's a it's a great conversation to be witness to, um, because you can see, it's giving students I think you know a very pr good and practical sense of of where they should be focusing their energies on. And you're, you're right, it's put, it's put the counselor in a, in a much better position to have, I think, the more meaningful conversation than to be using their time, you know, like you said, you know, as one example, preparing a trans transcript to be mailed out. It would seem that that might be also received pretty well on the other end. Oh, absolutely, Mr. Bowers, we'll yeah. See yes. that we are, in fact, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit ahead of the game. 
I suspect that not every district is doing that. No. So. No. At this point, I will accept a motion to accept the middle, the high school improvement plan for 